be standing for once uh, speaking um, on, on my own territory, Treaty 6 territory. So uh, I, I, I feel good nonetheless, you know, it's cold, it's, it's, it's all right. <laughs> um, I want to start by saying, uh, I've got this little quote that I, I like to share with people. Uh, Lakota chief and holy man sitting home said this, for us, warriors are not what you think of as warriors. The warrior is not someone who fights because no one has the right to take another's life. The warrior for us is one who sacrifices himself for the good of others. His task is to take care of the elderly, the defenseless, those who cannot provide for themselves, and above all, the children, the future of humanity. And that came from the militarization of Indian country by Wyoming Leduc. And I start, uh, I start with that because I, I, I look upon, you know, this, this gathering of people we have here. And us too, you know, we're warriors. We're Mother Earth soldiers. And the fact that you would sacrifice your day and stand here, you know, that, that proves that. <laughs> so when we, you know, when we look at uh, what the government has, has, has brought upon us, you know, Bill C-38, which guided our environmental laws. Bill C-45, which was a First Nations land grab and took the protection of our water. You know, on one day in December of last year, we had two and a half million protected lakes and rivers in Canada. The day after Bill C-45 was passed, we now have 97 protected lakes. Following that was Bill S-8 from the, uh, of the Alberta provincial government. And it comes down to water. That's what we're seeing. My uncle Al Lehman, who was the former retired chief of my nation, back in the 80s, was at an all chiefs gathering. At that gathering, he started telling the chiefs, you know, there's going to come a time and day when we're going to have to buy our water. They laughed at him. And here we are today, airlifting our babies to the hospitals for drinking contaminated water. People dying from cancer, oil and water advisories, people having to time their showers, moose from yeah. bubbles under the skin, <laughs> fish with tumors hanging off of them. Big Bear, who was a um, Treaty 6 signatory prior to the signing of Treaty Number 6 in 1876. It, it was told through our oral history, the literal translation, why he had resisted the signing of Treaty Number 6. And the literal translation said, I and my people will not be led around with ropes around our necks. He, was, he foretold the future. He knew what was going to happen. And here we are today, living those prophecies. The prophecy that the old people talk about, a black snake that's going to go across Turtle Island. Those pipelines, they're here. Our one true mother, stirring the thunder beams and waking up, waking up those beams to cleanse the land. And unfortunately, it's the poorest people that are suffering from that. The people in the Philippines. And we have to remember that our mother, when she shakes us from her, like fleas, she's going to continue on living whilst we've lost the time of war. The one thing that I always carry with me, words from my uncles, is that we never surrender our land. When we signed treaty, we were promised that we could go to the land the same as we did yesterday. And we would be able to do that tomorrow and the day after that, just as if we had never signed treaty. And when I talk about treaty and my obligation as a First Nations person to that treaty, I'm talking about Canadian citizens too because you too are treaty. And you too have an obligation. And we have the constitutional power to stop these pipelines, these developments, and this encroachment on what little we have left. And as First Nations people, we don't only have 
This law in Canada to abide by, we also abide by natural law, and there's nothing natural about a people dying from cancer. And I didn't come here to sell you anything. I came here to tell you that each and every one of us has one thing that industry and government will never have, and that's the truth. We are economic hostages, whilst our government plays environmental roulette with our lives. Environmental roulette, the thing with that game roulette is someone always loses, and right now it's us, my children, those children that are going to come for my children. <laughs> Former chief of the Beaver Lake Nation, now And I have an obligation to my children. I brought them into this world and I have an obligation to them because I'm not going to be that mother in the future whose children ask Mama how come you didn't do anything. And whatever it takes, I will. <laughs> Yeah!